So I don't know what happened to the Pittsburgh Penguins team, but everyone here besides Sidney Crosby is dropped down to a 36 overall, also known as a zero overall. The defense, it's full of 36 overalls, and in between the pipes, two 36 overall goaltenders. And it looks like the same thing has happened for the Washington Capitals. So these two teams now have zero overall players, except for a star on each team, Alexander Ovechkin on the Washington Capitals, Sidney Crosby on the Pittsburgh Penguins, and we're going to have these two guys race for a Stanley Cup. So what makes this even more difficult is not only are the Washington Capitals in the same conference as the Pittsburgh Penguins, but they're also in the same division. These two teams are going to have to match up against each other a handful of times, and when it comes to the postseason, more than likely they're going to have to get through the other team to make it to the Stanley Cup. Also, if you think Sidney Crosby is going to be winning the challenge, subscribe to the channel. And if you think Alexander Ovechkin is going to win, drop a like. It really shouldn't be a surprise that these teams aren't going to be seeing a ton of wins, but the Washington Capitals are going to be picking up two wins while the Pittsburgh Penguins are only picking up one and these wins came against each other. So Washington beat Pittsburgh twice, Pittsburgh beat Washington once. So when it comes to spinning the wheel to upgrade these teams, Washington is going to be getting the first spin. And of course, we have to highlight the fantastic seasons that these two guys had. Alexander Ovechkin, 15 goals, 2 assists, 17 points, minus 330. Well, over in Pittsburgh, Crosby's having a slower season, 9 goals, 2 assists, 11 points, minus 399. And just looking at the plus minuses on this team, I think it's safe to say that we're a few years away. Probably about 10 or 11. Meanwhile, during the postseason, Colorado is going to be hoisting the Stanley Cup, defeating the Florida Panthers in seven games, but none of this really matters. Let's go spin the wheel to upgrade these teams. So with the Washington Capitals finishing higher in the stands than the Pittsburgh Penguins, we're going to spin their wheel first, and the first position we're going to be adding to this team is a center. But what team is that center going to be coming from? Well, we got to spin this wheel to find that out, and we're going to be adding a center from the Columbus Blue Jackets. Unfortunately, the Columbus Blue Jackets don't really have an elite center, and the best guy available is Boone Jenner at an 84 overall. Now it's time to spin for the Pittsburgh Penguins to see what we're adding to their team, and we're going to be adding a right winger. And I probably should mention this now, each season I'm going to be doing two spins, because it takes a long time to get these teams in great condition. We're also going to be adding somebody from the New York Rangers. And when I say great condition, I just mean good enough to even compete for the playoffs, because this Pittsburgh Penguins team now has Sidney Crosby and Patrick Kane, and that's about it. So I don't think these two guys are going to be enough to get them to the Stanley Cup final, let alone the playoffs, and let alone winning five games. This team still sucks. Moving on to spin number two for Washington, anything's going to be helping this team, but it looks like they're going to be adding another forward and a left winger. And I'm just going to mention this now, left winger includes secondary position. So on the Montreal Canadiens, if someone's a right winger slash left winger, I can still add them to our team. And unfortunately, there's no really good left wingers on the Montreal Canadiens, and no one's secondary position is left wing, so we're going to be adding Christian Dvorak. So the Washington Capitals have now added Boone Jenner and Christian Dvorak. Not the greatest selections by any means. Moving back over to Pittsburgh spin, once again similar to Washington, anything's going to help, and now they're adding a left winger. So I think I've specified all the rules so far, everything should be straightforward from here on out, and now we're adding someone from the Winnipeg Jets, and I already know, Kyle Connor, you're the left winger we're bringing to the team. So that one's a pretty easy decision. Kyle Connor's now on the team. So we have a line of Kyle Connor, Sidney Crosby, and Patrick Kane. I guess having the second spin actually worked out for Pittsburgh because they're looking way better than Washington is. So although both of these teams add some great players, we're not going to really see anything changing in the standings. Washington's picking up two wins once again, while Pittsburgh's only picking up one. Meanwhile, for the Washington Capitals, Alexander Ovechkin continues to lead the way with 35 points. Boone Jenner's picking up 33, while Dvorak's picking up 27. Well, over in Pittsburgh Penguins territory, Patrick Kane's leading the way with 49 points. Sidney Crosby's picking up 48 and Kyle Connor's picking up 47. I shouldn't be overly surprised that Crosby finished second on the team because I mean Patrick Kane's a what a 90 overall. Crosby's a 93. Not much of a difference there. It's also only one point. But the rest of this team, Rust had one point, Nylander had one, Latang had one, O'Connor had one, and Petrie had one. That's it. I mean, was it somewhere in Washington? I don't think it was somewhere in Washington, was it? No. Sedin had four, Ferivari had four, a couple guys with two, and then a handful of guys with one. The scoring on Washington was just better all around. But the fact that there was, what, six players on Pittsburgh picking up one point? Nah, that team's cooked. Also, somehow the Florida Panthers are making it back to the Stanley Cup final, but they're going to take down the Vancouver Canucks in seven games. And yes, the current day Vancouver Canucks made the Stanley Cup final. We'll just leave it at that. So once again, we're going to be spinning the Washington Capitals wheel first, and it looks like we're adding another forward, and we got a right winger this time. So of course, there's still a ton of elite right wingers left, but I don't think one of the best is on the Calgary flames. I mean, Elias Lindholm might not be elite, but he's still a great pickup from the Washington Capitals because now he's their second best player. So I mean, 89 overall, I'm not really going to complain too much about that. Moving on to the spin for the Pittsburgh Penguins, they're getting the best possible upgrade and that's goaltending because goaltending completely changes everything. As long as they can get a good goaltender, because I mean, technically there is a possibility they land on Buffalo or Arizona, and that's not really helping them too much. And unfortunately, you're not getting the best result here. You got the Ottawa Senators. You were so close to the New York Islanders and Ilya Sorokin. 
So this is what you could have had, a 91 overall Sorokin, but instead you're going to have to settle for what? An 85 overall Cam Talbot? I mean, 85 is not bad. 84 overall, it could be much worse. Not by much, but it could have been way worse. Also, I'll give you Jeff Petrie in exchange. Can't completely steal him away from you. All right, Washington, you got to respond with a goaltender of your own and ideally make it Vasilevsky, but instead, they're finally adding one defenseman to the team. Now, there's still a lot of teams left that have elite left defensemen, and the LA Kings, unfortunately, isn't one of them. No, but real talk, Washington's been getting absolutely screwed so far. The best left defenseman on this team is who? Mikey Anderson. 83 overall, Mikey Anderson. Pittsburgh's gonna crush you. All right, Pittsburgh, it's time for you to double down, maybe pick up another goalie, but right now you're cruising ahead of the Washington Capitals and it's not even close. And now you're adding a right defenseman to the team, giving Cam Talbot a bit of help. Now a nice selection right here would have been the LA Kings. You could have added Drew Doughty, but instead the Toronto Maple Leafs. Who is the number one right defenseman on the Toronto Maple Leafs? Also, these are last season's roster, so it's not John Klingberg. Like I know Morgan Riley's here, but he's a left defenseman. So who actually is the best right defenseman on the Toronto Maple Leafs? I like, know disrespect, I actually just cannot think of it. Best right defenseman, I guess Eric Gustafson. All right then. So it looks like the Pittsburgh Penguins are making some strides this season they're going 378 and one not only did they win three games against the washington capitals but they also had an ot loss to the toronto maple leafs so they're headed in the right direction meanwhile washington's going 0 and 82 like usual said the kids can be the guy leading the way 16 goals 27 helpers 43 points patty kane's also picking up 43 points so i guess they're tied also shout out to our guy cam talbot three wins a 904 and a 553 given what this team actually looks like these numbers aren't that bad well over in washington everything about this team is bad i really have no positives to say about this team i mean 55 points 29 goals 26 helpers for ovi not bad numbers but i mean yeah let's just move on to upgrading these teams we don't need to look at the postseason so the penguins have finally finished above the washington in the Capitals, so they're going to begin the first spin, and they're going to be adding another right defenseman to the team. All right, you can't strike out here. Last time you added a right defenseman from the Toronto Maple Leafs, you got to do better this time around, and it looks like it's going to be from the St. Louis Blues, so it's Colton Pranko. So I don't need to show you adding Colton Pranko to the team. I know right off the rip, that's our best right defenseman from St. Louis right now. Center for Washington, that's a tough situation. They were so close to a goaltender, but nah. Let's bring another forward onto this team. But you never know, adding a forward could work out. If they landed on the Colorado Avalanche, you add Nathan McKinnon to the team, but in this case you're going to be adding Elias Pettersson. So Elias Pettersson is a massive upgrade for the Washington Capitals because he's now the second best player on the team. He's going to be teaming up with Ovi. So now we're going to have Pettersson, Ovi, and Lindholm on the first line together. Not a bad line if you ask me. I feel like it's been a long time before we saw an actual super superstar. Elias Pettersson's a great player, but he's not like top five in the entire league. Now we're adding a right winger. But when it comes to right wingers, you got a ton of options. David Pasternak was elite this season. He's one guy you could add to the team. But we're adding somebody from the Minnesota Wild, and I think it's going to be Kirill Kaprizov. So that's a massive steal for the Pittsburgh Penguins. Kirill Kaprizov, an absolutely elite player. Pairing him alongside Sidney Crosby. Nah, he's picking up 60 goals next season. That's light work for him. Okay, Washington, you just have to do something. Then. Like real talk, Pittsburgh's miles ahead of you guys right now. Why not pick up another forward? Because it's not like you've only added forwards to this team. I don't even know what to say about this team anymore, but like real talk. Obviously, their forward core is better than Pittsburgh's, but I mean, the rest of the team isn't even comparable. Actually, what am I talking about? Washington's forward core isn't even better than Pittsburgh's. Pittsburgh's better from top to bottom. And now they're going to be adding a left winger from Detroit. I don't even know who the best left winger on Detroit is. Lucas Raymond? Oh, I guess it's Dylan Larkin. That's his secondary position. But where's Lucas Raymond here? He's dropped all the way down to an 84. Did he really have that bad of a season? I guess he wasn't great this year, but yes, yeah, neither here nor there. Dylan Larkin? Welcome to the Washington Capitals, I guess. No, Washington, this is not a good look for you. 0-82 once again. Pittsburgh's picking up 10 wins. What are y'all even doing? Like Crosby, another great season. He's picking up 80 points. And you have some depth scoring here on Pittsburgh. 74 points from Kyle Connor. Kaprizov's picking up 71. Only 23 goals. That's actually pretty disappointing. I was expecting way more from him. But Washington, what are y'all doing here? I mean, get a goaltender and everything changes for this team. But y'all are just a bunch of frauds. Shout out to the Hurricanes, by the way. Winning a Stanley Cup. So for Pittsburgh, let's just keep adding superstars to this team. Maybe add a center. Ideally, land on the Edmonton Oilers. Add Connor McDavid. I don't think anyone would complain about that. So this is a massive spend so many elite players left here the boston bruins no it's going to be the arizona coyotes instead so pittsburgh this is what you could have had to the team 89 overall patrice bergeron enjoy retirement but instead nick schmaltz but you know what nick schmaltz isn't the worst like an 86 overall if he had a solid team around him he'd probably be like a 70 point guy i'm gonna make a hot take that probably shouldn't be a hot take if clayton keller had a good scorer around him he's easily a 100 point guy maybe even 110 but he is stuck with absolutely nothing in arizona because he's basically a point of game guy ignore this season and also ignore this season but the past two seasons bro's been elite he just has no elite scorers around him all right washington pick up a goaltender 
all you want is a goaltender that's not a goaltender and honestly landing on the forward position isn't the worst if you land on a team with great forwards anaheim's not that team however but really this team doesn't have too much left so the top left winger on the anaheim ducks is trevor zegris 87 overall could have been way worse but also could have been way better we'll take it i guess moving right on over to pittsburgh's second spin let's pick up another defenseman i think that's what this team needs and you're picking up a left d man that couldn't have worked out more perfectly now if you land on the nashville predators you can pick up a roman yossi type guy but you're gonna land on the Carolina Hurricanes, and that's not a bad pickup either. Now, respectfully, Pittsburgh clears the Washington Capitals by a landslide right now. Jacob Slavin's coming over to the Penguins. The entire forward core is better than Washington. The entire defensive core is better than Washington's. And the goaltending tandem, although it's literally Cam Talbot in a zero overall, that's better than the Washington Capitals. Unless Washington bounces back with this next spin. Like, if Washington picks up a goaltender here and it ends up being Vasilevsky, then I mean, that's a complete game changer. But nah, it's another forward. I accidentally spun the same wheel again. It's a right wing. Winger. It just, I think it just landed on back to back right winger. Um, yeah. So this spin is going to be for the next go around. So right winger from the New York Islanders. Wow, that does not work out for you. Wow, that is a terrible spin. Kyle Palmieri. There's no way Kyle Palmieri is the best option at right wing. I missed somebody. I had to have. Nope. It's literally Kyle Palmieri. Yeah. So yeah. So I guess you're getting 81 overall, Kyle Palmieri. You know what? Washington, you guys completely stink. I'm adding another right winger to your team for this spin. New Jersey Devils, hopefully that helps. Yeah, this team is just so bad. They need a bit of extra help. Jesper Bratt, welcome to the Washington Capitals. I don't think you can save this team because right now things don't look that great. And for Pittsburgh, yeah, I guess I'll just leave you guys at only two wheel spins. Washington will get three this time around. Eventually, I think it evens out, but way she goes. So both teams did worse. I don't even know how that's possible. Like Pittsburgh, you should have got better. Washington, you should have got better. Washington, 74 points from Ovi, 42 goals, 32 assists. Ovi, I got no issue with what you're doing. You're doing what you can here. Over in Pittsburgh, Patty Kane's going to lead the way, but he's tied with Crosby for 76 points. Now let's add some players. There is no reason you both should have gotten worse i mean technically washington did get better because they won two games but pittsburgh lost an additional five not really too sure all that works so we're spinning the wheel for pittsburgh honestly i don't even know what this team needs honestly we just need to fill out the rest of the team but they got another goaltender so now they got a tandem that can actually run now this is huge tampa bay would be awesome colorado would be awesome but not chicago Pittsburgh, you might be toast now because you had one last chance to pick up an elite goalie, but now you got Peter Mrazek. So Pittsburgh, honestly, I have no clue how you're going to do it, but you now have to try to win a Stanley Cup with a tandem of Peter Mrazek and Cam Talbot. I don't think it's possible, but hey, prove me wrong. So the highest overall right defenseman in the Seattle Kraken, of course, is Adam Larson. 85 overall, he's coming to our team. Moving on to Pittsburgh's second spin. At this point, you just have to fill out depth pieces. I mean, you got a strong forward core, but it's about to get stronger with another right winger. And just looking at the teams remaining, there's so many elite options left i don't know how we've somehow got rid of all the bad teams so far edmonton oilers that's kind of tough you're not getting a center though you could have added Connor mcdavid but instead who are you actually adding because josh is a left winger it might be zach hyman i'm gonna keep it a thousand though if you went from the options of Connor mcdavid and leon josh to zach hyman that's real tough like that's incredibly tough but i mean zach hyman's still a decent pickup yeah zach hyman way she goes i guess like zach hyman's not bad by any means but he's not mcdavid and he's not dry i'm not even gonna say anything we know what this team needs that's not what they need. Honestly, I'm actually just sick and tired at this point. Like, is it really that hard to add a goaltender? I mean, it's completely random, so they don't have a choice. But even still, it's just ridiculous. So Victor Hedman's absolutely massive for this team because not only is he the highest overall defenseman on the team, he's also the highest overall player now. He's passed Ovi by one overall. Until Washington gets a decent goaltender or any goaltender, they're not going to be able to compete with the best in the league. Only one win this season. Pittsburgh slowly headed in the right direction though. 13, 64, and 5. Yeah, I don't really know what to say about these teams anymore. Pittsburgh's just screwed because of a bad goaltending tandem. And Washington, they need somebody in between the pipes. Pittsburgh's team shows all the potential here. Like Crosby, Kaprizov, Patrick Kane, Kyle Connor, Zach Hyman, a bunch of elite defensemen. Well, maybe not elite defensemen, but I mean Jacob Slavin, Colton Pranko, Gustafson, quality NHL guys. They might not be the superstars, but they're the guys you need to get it done. Meanwhile, Washington doesn't really have the bigger names. I mean, Ovi's here. They got Pedersen, Jesper Bratt. Victor Hedman was an amazing pickup. Lindholm Zegris, like good guys, but I mean, just in between the pipes, like look at this. Charlie Lindgren showed to him one win, a 7.45 and a 9.57. He's zero overall. He can't help it. So Pittsburgh, you already have both your goaltenders. So at this point, we're just picking up depth pieces for you. Unless you can secure an absolute superstar. Let's see what we can get from the left wing position. Like really? I don't know what I'm going to pick up for you guys. I take that back. I know exactly who I'm picking up for you guys. So 76 overall, 
called Jonathan Marshall. So you actually weren't the guy I was thinking of. It was either Jack Eichel or Mark Stone, but neither of them play left wing and you do. So you're the guy I'm bringing to the team. You guys also can have Brian Dublin in exchange. A pretty fair trade if you ask me. Give him a goalie. Just, just give Washington a goalie. That's really all they need. I have nothing to say anymore. Like I got absolutely nothing to say. It's not a goaltender. And Dallas would have been great for a goaltender because you would have added Jake Ottinger to the team. But instead, you will be adding an elite right winger. So Joe Pavelski, an elite two-way player. I mean, you're almost 40 at this point. How old are you? 38 years old. We got to give Joe Pavelski some props. I feel like he doesn't get enough recognition for what he does at 38 years old. Like, this dude's an absolute beast. And now he's a member of the Washington Capitals, hoping to lead this team back to greatness. No pressure. Heading back over to the Pittsburgh Penguins, the center position is what we're going to be adding next. And the centerman we're going to be selecting is going to be coming from the Philadelphia Flyers. And I'm guessing Sean Couturier. And that's exactly who it is. 88 overall Sean Couturier. Welcome to the Pittsburgh Penguins. You're the new second line center. So I'm just going to let this spin. And I'm not going to talk whatsoever. I, I'm talking while I say that. Now this game has really got me bugging right now. I'm talking about how I'm going to sit in silence. But how do I sit in silence? I explain how I'm going to sit in silence. No, this game has got me messed up right now. Florida Panthers. I don't even remember what position we're adding. I think it's a forward. No, it's a right defenseman, isn't it? And that's exactly what it is. A right defenseman. We're adding it from the Florida Panthers. And Florida's got some decent options here. And the best one, of course, is going to be Aaron Ekblad. So Aaron Ekblad, welcome to the Washington Capitals. We just need to go through this slowly. The Pittsburgh Penguins, 27, 52, and 3. All right, so we know they're not making the playoffs, but they were a decent team this season. Now, what were the Washington Capitals up to? Oh, you have just seen it there. I'll just show you it right here then. 0, 82, and 1. They didn't win a single game. I'm not looking at anyone's stats. We're immediately spinning this wheel right now. Here's the NHL team's wheel. That's not the one we want. Washington Capitals, spinning. I don't care they didn't win a game. We're spinning until they get a goaltender, left winger. All right, that's what we're adding first. So however many spins it takes for Boston, or not Boston. Oh my God, I can't think. I saw Boston. I started thinking of Allmark to add for a goaltender. They're adding a left winger from San Jose. There's a lot going on right now. So what I was trying to say was, however many spins it takes for Washington to get a goaltender, that's how many we're doing this round. So San Jose left winger, that's going to be Tomas Hurdle. All right, that's spin number one. We'll see how many this takes. Moving on to spin number two. Let's just get a goaltender. The goaltender is going to be the final two spins. I just know it. So left D-man, that's what we're adding next. From the Colorado Avalanche, that's a decent pickup though. It's going to be like Devon Taves or something. Devon Taves is going to be a massive upgrade for this team. I'm definitely not going to complain about that. So Devon Taves, that's going to be a massive pickup for this team. Of course, I would have wanted Kale McCarr, but I can live with an 88 overall Devon Taves. All right, let's get back to spinning this wheel. Capitals positions, give me goaltender. How are we avoiding goaltender? It doesn't even make sense anymore. There's literally only three teams left, and now we're adding a right defenseman from Buffalo. I'm honestly speechless at this point. Like, I don't even know what to say. Right defenseman from Buffalo, who's that gonna be? Henry Yoki Haru. Okay, I'm just gonna leave it at that. Give me goaltender. All I ask is goaltender here. There's a 50% chance we get goaltender, and finally, we're getting it. Now land on the Boston Bruins. I mean, if you get Nashville Predators, UC Soros is still a great pickup, but give me Boston. And finally, the Washington Capitals can compete. And just like that, it's finally happened. 90 overall, Linus Allmark. He's joining the Washington Capitals. They've got something now. They can work with this. So that was four spins for the Washington Capitals. And the first spin for the Pittsburgh Penguins is going to be giving us what position? It looks like it's going to be another centerman. And Nashville is the only team left, so that's who we're going to be adding from. No, but real talk, the fact that it took this long for Washington to get a goaltender is actually ridiculous. We were down to the final four spins. That doesn't even make any sense, but here we are. Matt Duchesne, welcome to the Pittsburgh Penguins. So I've reset the wheel and every team's back here. Here, the Edmonton Oilers. I just realized I didn't spin the position wheel yet, but if it lands on center, it's wraps. There's one center position left here for the Pittsburgh Penguins. If they can hit center here, they're going to go crazy. They're just going to be missing out, but they're going to be adding a left winger. And we already know there's an elite left winger on this team. So Leon Draisaitl, welcome to the Pittsburgh Penguins. And now you're on the first line with Sidney Crosby. Moving on over to Pittsburgh's third spin. I think they have one more after this. Yes, they do. They're going to be picking up another left winger. No way Pittsburgh just adds a bunch of elite left wingers, right? Who's a left winger on the New York Islanders? I think they have more options than they do when it comes to right wingers. Because when it came to right wingers, the New York Islanders didn't really have anything. And it looks like the, that's the exact same with left wingers. Just kidding. Brock Nelson or Neil. Nielsen. It's Nelson or Nielsen. I think it's Nelson. It's one of those two. And now he's a member of the Pittsburgh Penguins. So this is our last spin on the wheel for the Pittsburgh Penguins. It looks like it's going to be one more defenseman to the team and it's going to be a right defenseman. If they land on Colorado, I'm losing my mind. There's no way that happens. It's Tampa Bay though. 
And although Victor Hemmings not on the team anymore, you still got Eric Chernak. And Eric Chernak is definitely not a bad pickup because he's a good defensive defenseman. And in a video like this, it's actually really hard to pick up defensive defensemen. So an 84 overall defensive defenseman, that's a decent pickup. I also said the term defensive defenseman way too much in the past like 10 seconds. So yeah, let me chill for a sec. I never thought I'd see the day. The Washington Capitals, 40, 35, and 7. Yes, they didn't make the playoffs. But 20th in the entire league is something. They're finally heading in the right direction. All it took was 900 spins to get them a goaltender. Meanwhile, Pittsburgh sucks. Also, ignore this team. That didn't happen. Okay, Crosby, even with all the hype, you were incredibly mid, only picking up 60 points. What are you doing, my guy? I need you to step it up. Meanwhile, in Washington, we already know Ovi's carrying the way like usual. 51 goals, 39 assists, 90 points. Ayo hey, said the kid. You can't let Ovi outperform you like that. It's a bad look, my guy. So I think it's just going to take a few more spins and we're going to see these teams make the postseason. So more than likely next season. All right, so what I'm going to do is Washington has three positions left. Pittsburgh has four. I'm going to spin the wheel of NHL teams seven times. Of course, four for Pittsburgh, three for Washington. This first spin works for Pittsburgh. It goes for Pittsburgh, I guess. This spin is for Pittsburgh, basically. They're adding somebody from the San Jose Sharks. It has to be either a left defenseman, a center, or a right winger. One of those three positions. So we're going to be taking a center away from the San Jose Sharks and adding that to the Pittsburgh Penguins, and it's going to be Logan Couture. Moving on to the spin for the Washington Capitals, it looks like they're bringing someone from the Carolina Hurricanes onto the team. So this is actually a really solid pickup, Sebastian Ajo. Honestly, this team doesn't need any more centers, but he also plays left wing, so... Yeah, Sebastian Ajo, welcome to the Washington Capitals. Moving on to Pittsburgh's next spin, they're going to be getting a great upgrade here. Or I thought they were getting the Boston Bruins, they're getting the Buffalo Sabres, but that's still going to be a fantastic upgrade for this team. And one of the positions we can add to the Pittsburgh Penguins, better make sure I switch it to the Pittsburgh Penguins first, is a right winger, so you already know, Tage Thompson, he's that guy. So if we get land on Tampa Bay here, or some team that has an elite goaltender, that would be great for Washington. Jake Ottinger, I'm not even debating it. No point messing around. Jake Ottinger's got to come to the Washington Capitals. Now this team has an elite duo. Allmark and Ottinger? No, it's wraps for the league. So for Pittsburgh's final two spins, it's going to be two left defensemen. And the first left defenseman is going to be coming from the Anaheim Ducks. And that's going to be Cam Fowler. Like off the rip, I already know he's the highest overall left defenseman on the team. I've played this game way too much not to know this. And now we have the final spin for the Washington Capitals. They can add one more center to this team, I believe. And that center is going to be coming from the Detroit Red Wings. Not a great selection, seeing as we've already taken Dylan Larkin away. And I don't know who the second line center is. So from the Detroit Red Wings, who is the second line center? I have no clue who it is. Andrew Kopp. I'll just leave it at that. Also, I'll make sure I switch to Washington. Last thing I want is to be putting the wrong players on the wrong teams. Although that's probably happened at some point in this video. Who knows? You'll have to let me know in the comments below. And finally, we've got our last spin. One more left defenseman. Who's it going to be from? The Calgary Flames, it looks like. That's exactly who it's from. Let's see who's going to be our final pickup. And our final pickup for the Pittsburgh Penguins is going to be Mackenzie Wieger, 86 overall. He's coming to the team. And now we've got both of these teams locked up. So I'm going to take a quick look at both of these teams. For the Pittsburgh Penguins, we got Crosby, Kaprizov, Kane on the first line. On the second line, Tage Thompson, Leon Dreisaitl, Kyle Connor. The bottom six, we already know what that's looking like. Defensively, this is actually a pretty solid team. No weaknesses there. And in between the pipes is the biggest question mark cam talbot and peter mrazic can they be the guys for us he's looking at the washington capitals they got linus allmark and jake onger a 90 and 89 overall so there's no weaknesses in between the pipes offensively this team's elite it actually might be better than the pittsburgh penguins for the longest time i was saying washington wasn't even in the same realm as pittsburgh but i'm gonna have to take that back now this team's got some studs here victor Hedman, aaron ekblad devon taves can't leave out adam larson i don't know man this could go either way so here we are with our two teams finally at the top of the league we got the washington capitals 60 16 and 6 and the pittsburgh penguins 16 18 and 4 they're easily the two best teams in the league and they're going head-to-head -head in the postseason i hope they go head-to-head -head. if they don't that means somebody lost in the first round it was another incredible season from ovi even though he picked up 88 points though he was only plus five not too sure how that works how are you only plus five with this entire team here like that doesn't make any sense well crosby 95 points and he's plus 31 that makes a bit more sense but as we know the regular season means absolutely nothing if you fall in the first round washington's taking on the boston bruins there's no way boston should beat us there without all mark and the pittsburgh penguins they're gonna have their hands full at the new york rangers because the only guy they lost was patrick kane so they should still be looking pretty solid you're kidding you're joking right like no this is a joke this has to be a prank they don't have all mark in between the pipes i mean pittsburgh's gonna win their matchup they better win their match. I'm going to simulate the rest of this one just to make sure they win. Oh, for a second, I thought they were going to blow a 3-0 lead. Okay, they're taking on Boston in the second round. Can the Pittsburgh Penguins get past the Boston Bruins? This is the biggest matchup of the video. If they can get past Boston, they have a real shot at Stanley Cup. They lost 10-6 in this game. 
but you know what they've made it to the conference finals over in the western conference we have colorado taking on nashville big matchup for the pittsburgh penguins they're making quick work at the carolina hurricanes and now we have the stanley cup final colorado's got themselves a 2-1 lead because i simulated too far but that doesn't really matter pittsburgh's coming out big they got a 3-2 series lead can they close this out in game six no they can't game seven elimination for the stanley cup Sidney crosby has a chance to win this challenge all he has to do is win one more game. And we have to remember one game is more than what the Washington Capitals won in the entire postseason because they got swept in the first round to the Boston Bruins. Not even sure how that works, but no, it's wraps. It's wraps. Pittsburgh's done. Eight to four. Also, the rule is you're allowed to steal one player away from the Stanley Cup winning team now that neither of these teams have won a Stanley Cup. So Pittsburgh, you're adding Kale McCarr to the team. That's an executive decision I'm making right now. So Pittsburgh, since you made it further in the postseason, I'm giving you Kale McCarr. Somebody better win in the playoffs this time around. And Washington, you better win at least one game. Because the fact that you got swept without Linus Ulrich in between the pipes for Boston is absolutely ridiculous. So once again, we're going to see Washington finishing at the top of the league with a 58-16-8 record. But Pittsburgh lost an additional 11 games this season after adding Kale McCarr. Alright, I don't even know how to explain that one. But Patrick Kane's going to be leading the way for the Pittsburgh Penguins. He's picking up 95 points. Crosby's got 87. But real talk, how did you finish worse? Like, lower in the standings? I guess it wasn't lower in the standings, less wins when I added Kill McCarr to your team. Ovi's picking up 92 points, 46 goals, 46 helpers. In the first round, Pittsburgh's taking on Carolina. Washington's taking on the New Jersey Devils. Just make it to the second round. I want to see these two teams match up against each other. So I'm going to simulate from Pittsburgh's perspective this time around because my simulated from Washington's last time didn't really work out too well. So Pittsburgh's going to be split in the first four games. It's 2-2 in the series right now. Game five, Pittsburgh's going to be winning. Can they close this one out in game six? That's exactly what we're doing. And they're matching up against the Washington Capitals. Somebody's going to be making it to the conference finals from this series. Who's it going to be? This is a big one. It looks like Pittsburgh's dominating and they're going to find a way to close it out. They're taking down the Washington Capitals. And they've reached the conference finals. So Pittsburgh, you have a chance to close this out once again. Meanwhile, shout out to my St. Louis Blues in the Western Conference Final. They're taking on the Colorado Avalanche. All right, so I have not been able to formulate my words right now, but Pittsburgh just took down the Tampa Bay Lightning. They're taking game one against Colorado. Pittsburgh, you have a chance for revenge. Can you close this series out? Can Sidney Crosby win a Stanley Cup? Yes, he can. In game six, they're going to close out in a 4 nothing victory and said the kid's completing the challenge. Challenge. Now, but real talk, I could not formulate my words. I couldn't create sentences, but it doesn't matter. Pittsburgh's going to take down Washington in the second round in a seven game series. That one was back and forth the entire way, but Pittsburgh, they just had a bit more grit in them, made it all the way to the Stanley Cup final, and they're going to close it out this time around. Also, can we talk about how Colorado made it all the way to the Stanley Cup final without Devon Taves and without Kale McCarr? Like, that team is legit built different. 